Isn't it interesting, right, that we both know a couple of very talented photographers who are not really making a lot of money? Yet on the flip side, there's a lot of other okay photographers who have gigs every single weekend. I believe that's the case because in photography, it takes more than just talent, creativity and skill to turn it into a really successful business. You see, photography is a very experiential sort of work. It starts from the first time you meet a client to when you submit the images. And every single step of the way, it's a chance for you to sell yourself to your client. But how do you do that if you don't know or understand how business works? It's not something that is really talent-based or creativity-based. It's something that is very skill-based. Like any other business, you need to have the mind of a businessman to run your photography business. So in this video, I'm going to share with you a few observations I've made on how to jumpstart your photography business. Let's get going. As much as photography is an art, it's also a really reliable form of business. So in no particular order, I'm going to list um, five things I believe are things that can help you jumpstart your business. For obvious reasons, the very first thing I'm going to talk about is your camera system. As a photographer, you definitely need a camera and a lens. But the biggest question under this part is the fact that there's so many different cameras and so many different options and different price tags. And how do you navigate through these choices to know which one is best for you? Well, I can recommend a few entry-level cameras like the Canon 60D, the Canon 650D, the Fujifilm X-T1, the Sony A7R, the Sony A7. All these are great entry-level points for you to start with. It's going to take you a while to own really expensive cameras and very capable cameras. But how I did it was I started with a Canon 60D and worked my way up. My main goal was to understand how the camera system works, to know the ins and outs of that camera, pretty much because most Canon cameras were the same. What I did next was, if I had any job I felt my camera was incapable, I would then rent a camera to complete the work, whilst I saved money to buy the camera I wanted to in the future. Here in Ghana, some of the vendors I've bought stuff from are people like Chicago Pair, GoPixel R, um, NK Photo Studios, and Popo Cameras. I'm sure there are a lot of other people you can try out, but these are the ones I've worked with or I've bought stuff from, and I pretty much recommend them. The other part is, is the rental bit, which I think is very important if you want to work your way up the ladder. You don't always have to own the best gears to create incredible work. You can always rent. And some of the people I would recommend will be MCB Rental Shop. You can check them out on Instagram, and I'm going to put their stuff in the description below. So let's go on to the next one, which I feel is really important. The second part is to know your niche and understand your market. So you have a camera now, awesome. You've picked up a few skills, great. You have some friends who can help you out here or there, pretty much everything covered. The next thing is to discover what you love. My recommendation would be that you spread your wings really wide and dabble in all forms of photography you can. You can try maternity photography, wedding, you can try corporate events, you can try products, you can try sports, you can try documentaries, you can try architecture, like there's so many things that you can try. Please don't limit yourself and try as much as possible. However, whilst you're doing it, pay attention to the ones you might fall in love with because that might be your niche market. Now, here's the plot twist. The second part is to understand your market. You can be in a certain space, especially in a different country, depending on where you are, that a certain aspect of photography is not really booming. There's nothing stopping you from joining the niche in that country that is really working, whilst you divert funds to the other thing you love. So let me explain. I didn't originally want to be a wedding photographer, but here in Ghana is one of the industries that really sell quickly. So I joined wedding photography to sell my services, to make money and invest it into what I actually wanted to do. When I felt I had bought all the equipment I needed to jump into the niche I wanted, I quickly made the switch and it was very easy. That is the tactic I use and it's something that I think you can try as well. So you don't always have to join the bandwagon of other things that is working because you think what you want to do wouldn't work. You can borrow some clients from the other side, use that money you're going to make to influence the niche you're trying to enter. And I believe you can always make a niche no matter where you are. That is what I honestly believe. Although it might be slow, it might take some time to build up the credibility, it's something that's doable. So know your niche and understand the market and play within those lines to make sure that you are not lacking behind. The next thing is probably the most important. I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again. This is the most important part. Be professional. No matter how talented or creative you are, if you treat your photography business as a hobby, 
you're not going to be successful. You're going to fail at it. And that's the hard truth because clients depend on you way more than you think. It's not just about the quality of images you produce. It's about the client's experience throughout the process. So let me explain in two simple steps. The first step is how you approach the business. I believe that to have a very successful photography business, you need to have the mind of a businessman, the heart of a mother, and the ears of a customer service personnel. It's a really human-centric process. You can't cut that bit out. Things you might not consider as important like being on time, replying your emails, making sure you answer your calls or you return missed calls really quickly are things that clients find very valuable. Unfortunately, these are things that most photographers lack. Being sincere and truthful with your delivery times, being very transparent with the process with the clients, all these things are really soft skills that you need to handle a photography business. I don't blame a lot of people because they just picked up the camera and it worked for them because of their talent. Your talent can really take you to a certain level, but beyond that, you need to be professional to carry whatever you built into a proper business that can fetch you a lot of money. There are some other things like asking your clients very important questions when you get a job. Things like trying to understand the scope of the work, not just taking your camera and going to shoot because their client called you to come over. Me, for instance, I sometimes send my clients questionnaires to try and understand what they're thinking or where they're coming from so we can be on the same page. Other times, I also send them mood boards so I know that we are definitely on the same visual spectrum. If I feel like I'm not the best person to do the job, I would definitely recommend other photographers who can also do very great work. The second part is the visual branding of your photography business. Yes, I'm talking about the logos, the other branding materials like your pen drives, your deliveries, your photo books, your albums, your website, your social media. I mean, all these things are points of contact that your client would first meet before they get to meet you in person. So you, you really have to take care of it. First of all, it's extremely important that you have a very appealing visual identity system. I'm pretty much talking about how your logo looks and how it works on your complete branding package. So you probably would want to stay away from cliche logo ideas, find a good designer, you can exchange creative services, you can take pictures for them while they design the logo for you or you can just pay up front but find somebody who knows what you're doing to help you develop that. Moving on, you have to pay attention to your social media. Your accounts reflect how credible your business is so it's important to separate your personal page from your business page. If, you, if you're using your personal page for your photography business, I recommend you stop that and start a business page. For sure, some people have used their personal page and it's worked for them. However, it is not a best practice. It's always important to separate those two. Other things like your website is something I feel is very important. I don't see a lot of Ghanaian photographers use websites, but the truth behind that is that's the gateway to get international audience. Because most international audience comes to Ghana and they don't look for your Instagram page or your Facebook page. They search everything in Google to find uh, the best architect photographer in the country, the best documentary photographer in the country. And, you, and if you don't have your website and good SEO built in, they're not going to find you on Instagram. So that's something I've noticed that a lot of Ghanaians don't do that and I really recommend that you get your website up and running. Even if you don't have a lot of work there, you can link it back to your Instagram. But since the website is running on its own, it can be a pretty easy way to be found through Google. So I personally give out personalized gifts to my most paying clients at the end of every year. Last year, I think I bought a platter from Studio Batch and I gifted it to my most paying client at the end of the year. These things go a long way to build trust and reliability between you and them so they can keep on coming back. To a certain point, it goes beyond how talented you are, but how personal and professional you can get to your business. Clients really respect that. The next thing I'm going to talk about is software, and I'm going to talk about it in two different ways. The first part is the software you need to improve the visual quality of your images. Yeah, I'm talking about things like Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One. There's a ton of them. You can search them out. I really recommend you find time to understand how these software work. You can start by just spending 20 hours a week learning about these softwares and it won't really take you a lot of time. You need the extra hand to make sure that you enhance the images that you're working on and also increase your speed and efficiency. Some forms of photography demand mastery and these software. So I recommend that if you're going to venture into a form of photography that demands mastery, you take your time, find a good mentor, watch some really quality YouTube tutorials and go at it. But then don't get carried away. Don't overdo it. Always find a benchmark that works for you and then stick to it. The second part is the software that helps you automate your business. I mean, it's really important that you use 
technology to help automate most of your processes. Especially in this coronavirus period, I'm sure you've noticed how digital has become very important. So things like writing invoices, things like delivering your photos to your clients, things like ordering photo books are things that you should have automated by now. Even things like email marketing are things you should automate by now. I mean, how do you meet more clients? Are you going to submit complimentary cards or are you going to find a way to capture their emails when they download your photos? I personally use a website like Pixieset, which has a very beautiful gallery to submit um, images to my clients. And that's the same way I reach out to more audiences. Uh, talk about Pixieset, I'm going to leave a link in the description below, which is a referral code. If you use that, you're going to get 250 megabyte extra on your Pixieset account, which can help you go a long way. So I highly recommend you use that link in the description below. You're pretty much going to enjoy it. The last thing I'm going to talk about is being confident. I can't stress enough on how much it's important that a photographer has to be confident. I really can't give you the magic formula to gain confidence, but I can share with you my experience on how being confident has changed my workflow. One of the first things I noticed about being confident as a photographer was how I began to price. At first, I was really shy of mentioning big amounts because I was afraid they would think my work was not that much or my work was not worth that much. What I'll do was I always shied away from new work because I was afraid to confront clients and convince them on why they should pay me a certain amount. And I always relied on referral clients because they already know that I've done great work for someone they know. But that's not the right way to go. You wouldn't always have referral clients and you have to go out there and look for work. So I had to master the courage to go to people and convince them that I'm the right person for the job and the amount of money I'm asking for, it's just worth it. The second thing I noticed was I began to now trust other people's work and help promote other photographers. At first, I used to be very competitive and sometimes a bit envious about how well others are doing. But that was all because I lacked confidence in my own skill. As I became very confident, I started appreciating the hard work other photographers are putting into their craft and helping them also go further. This helped me build a community of friends of photographers who sometimes even bring me gigs when they are not busy. So I really stress on the fact that don't see the availability of more photographers as a downside to your business. Lastly, being confident helps you to build a certain level of creativity I'm not sure you are used to yet. It's the kind of confidence that helps you to try out new things. It's a kind of confidence that can tell you that it's okay to suck at the beginning and later on you're going to do well. And it really reflects in showing your work. What I mean by that is I'm sure you are shying away from posting some of your work because you think it's not as good as others you've seen online. But the truth is everyone started from somewhere. And if you don't push your work now, you're not going to get the exposure you need to change or improve. You probably don't know who's out there who's going to be so impressed by that thing you think is crap. So have the confidence and post your work out there. That is going to give you more confidence to keep on doing the work. I mean, look at this YouTube channel. I started with zero subscribers. I'm already on 695. If I didn't post the work I was so afraid of, people would not have given me the courage to keep on going. And now I'm here for good. So these are the five observations that I think can help you jumpstart your photography business. The first thing is the obvious one to get a camera system. The second thing is to know your niche and understand your market. The, the third thing is to be professional. The fourth thing is to use good software and understand the softwares that can improve or enhance the visual quality of your images. And the last thing is to be confident. It's really difficult to turn your passion into profession, but it's possible. A lot of people have done it, but it's important that you make sure that you are not blending the lines between hobby and business. If you're in photography as a hobby, that's fine, that's cool. If you're in it as a business, you pretty much have to work as a businessman. There are so many other things I didn't talk about, like having passion for the work, the love of art that can keep you practicing constantly. My friend Ivan mentioned this some time ago when I was having this exact conversation with him about how the passion helps him practice more often. He doesn't always pick up a camera just because he has work but he picks up a camera to just shoot and that keeps him on his toes all the time. So I think it's very important to also have the passion to also go ahead. It's going to help you in really, really tough times. Well, I guess that's it. This is pretty much everything I have for you. It's definitely not as long as my other videos, but I do hope that this is a conversation starter that can help other photographers look beyond equipment and start understanding that if you're in this for a business, you've got to know the best practices, talk to strategists, talk to businessmen, you can get an accountant to help you manage your finances. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that you have to do that is on the opposite side of being creative and being a talented photographer. So, well, thank you so much for watching the video. If you've been watching my content, 
Thank you so much. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I produce content on photography, film, and design, and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy your stay here. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you later. Bye.